Yo, what's up Giants fans, Hub Watchers, YouTube subscribers, Twitter and Instagram followers, it's Kush back at it again with another New York Giants video, although this one is a bit more widespread than that. It is just kind of an NFL update video, specifically NFL draft, offseason, all of that update video. Yesterday was the first day of combine drills. Um, I actually thought combine drills would have began today, but the wide receivers, tight ends, and quarterbacks did get on the field yesterday. They ran their 40 times. We had the unofficial times going wild on Twitter, which had people reacting in all types of ways. At one point, it was believed that John Ross's record was uh, broken. But lo and behold, when the official times came out, there was a little bit of discrepancy between what people thought it was and what people um, actually clocked it as. Of course, the quarterback showed out and the tight ends kind of uh, did not really get that much shine because of just how crazy the wide receiver and quarterback group were. And of course, since it is a Giants channel, I will try and fit in a little bit of how this affects the Giants draft plan, if at all. So let's start off with those wide receivers actually let's start off with what might possibly be the fastest wide receiver group in recent memory it seemed like everybody that went out there ran a sub 4 4 40 time which is insane and of course i will have to restate uh 40 times are not necessarily indicative of what these receivers look like during the game you know what i'm saying in game game speed the best example of that is jamar chase from last year People thought he ran a slow 40 time, or at least for a guy of Jamar Chase's stature. But in game, in speed, like he is one of the fastest dudes in the NFL, one of the fastest dudes in football, period. And we see that all the time. Like John Ross has the fastest uh, 40 time of NFL history, but he is not the fastest player in the NFL. Like that would probably go to Tariq Hill or somebody like that. Right. So just put that out there. But 40 times is a just a measurement for speed, right? It's a measurement for speed and um, acceleration as well, because they have the uh, 10 yard, 20 and 30 yard marker as well to see how long it took you to get up to um, your top speed, what your top speed was and all of that. But let's talk about it. The unofficial time that came in was for a Baylor University wide receiver. His name is Taquan Thornton. People thought he ran at 421 which would have broken John Ross's record. The official time came in, it was a 4 2 wait. And like I said, it seemed like everybody ran a sub 40, um, sub 4 4 40. Here are the top 10 wide receivers 40 times from yesterday. So Torton at 4 2 wait. You got Vilas Jones out of Tennessee at 4 3 1. Calvin Austin out of Memphis, 4 3 2. Alec Pierce out of Cincinnati, 4 3 3. Danny Gray, SMU, 4 3 3. Bo Melton out of Records, 4 3 4. Christian Watson out of NDSU. 436, Garrett Wilson 438, Chris Olave 439, and Sky Moore 441. Literally almost everybody ran below a 4440. That is absolutely crazy. There are a couple names to note here that are definitely going to climb up uh, draft boards. The guy that I just uh, sort of discovered in Christian Watson, who it seems like the Giants may or may not have their eye on, but a lot of teams do. He is slowly climbing up draft boards after Senior Bowl and after a performance like this, I would expect him to climb up as well where he's uh, at the seventh fastest wide receiver there that uh, performed at the combine. Of course, drills aren't over. There's more things to do. Um, the three cone drill, I'm not sure if... I don't think that happened yesterday. I checked everywhere. I don't think it happened yesterday. It still has yet to come. That's going to be something we have to see. There's there's other stuff that needs to get done. Uh, Gary Wilson and Chris Olave, the two Ohio State wide receivers, performed as expected. Not sure if that's going to necessarily make them climb up draft boards or if that's just going to help teams solidify where they have them, but they were really good. Sky Moore, another name that's been climbing up the draft board since essentially January to now, just in, over the entire process, put on a nice show as well. Getting over to the quarterback side now, what we, or I guess what was really the talk today was the arm strength, was the arm talent how far these guys threw it down the field how effortlessly they made it seem throwing it down the field were they accurate you know it was that throw and drill for the quarterbacks and two names stood out above the rest well really one name but uh it, it was two when you look at the big picture but it was malik willis and kenny pickett uh probably quarterback number one and two of this draft there's been a lot of you know i guess mixing and matching of rankings over the past couple of weeks and over the past couple of months uh, like I said with the wide receivers, the combine is one of those tools that's going to help teams solidify where they have them or help them change where they have these guys ranked. And uh, Malik Willis for sure showed out. He had a really good, really good throwing day. Um, Definitely showed off his arm strength for sure. And that's that caught a lot of people's eyes. 
Uh, he looked really good as well. The dude was shredded, man. I mean, his arms in general looked like a like a muscle a muscle man in front of like a body and fitness magazine, uh, you know, mag cover magazine. I don't know why I tripped over my words there, but he looked good physically and he looked good throwing the football. Same thing with Kenny Pickett. There was multiple 60 yard down the field uh, throws. It was it was arm strength was the name of the game, right? Um, there were for me at least, you know, there were a couple of accuracy things. Like there was a couple times he threw it out of bounds. Um, there was a couple times he overthrew his receivers a little bit. But you know, those are things that can be worked on. What we're looking at here uh, is what has been described as Malik Willis is that there's a lot of raw talent in there that you can mold and shape into a great quarterback for whichever team takes him. And, and that's why I've I've become a fan of of Willis over these past couple of weeks i want to say over the past month essentially i've really become a big fan of him i don't care where he goes i just hope that wherever he does go they don't waste the talent that i'm seeing they don't waste the potential i'm seeing because i think that if he goes to a team like pittsburgh or tennessee or the saints these are all teams that are picking in sort of that second half of the first round pick 16 and below or 16 and above i should say these are teams that are a bit more prepared than teams like the Giants, for example. They have more in place. They could afford to have a quarterback make mistakes and afford to have him take a little bit longer to develop. I think that's where he's going to shine the most. And I think those teams can tap into his potential and help shape him into a great quarterback. Um, what I actually don't hope happens, um, at least for the sake of him, is that he ends up going to a team like Carolina. And yeah, he's the this performance has really kind of pushed him up so much, at least, you know, in, in fans' eyes. That I'm seeing a lot of Carolina fans want him at pick seven. Um, that is good for us, the Giants, because I mean, at pick six, that is good for us, the Giants, because we pick at pick seven, meaning they won't take any offensive lineman or edge rusher or just any good player that we um, have prioritized uh, at that pick. It's I think it might be bad for Malik Willis, the player who, once again, I am a fan of. I want to see this guy succeed because I don't know if I trust Matt Rule to to get the best out of him, and I don't know if Carolina is in a situation. To, to fully help this guy but we'll we'll see when that comes but once again you know going from around the end of the first round mid first round now even being talked about a pick six to carolina big jump for that guy right there and then in terms of the tight end group like i said they kind of got left back not to say they weren't impressive or anything but when you had a quarterback group that dominated like that when you had a wide receiver group that were flying like rockets on the field the, the tight end does kind of get left back but i guess the biggest thing to note about them was their measurements they're a big tight end group they're a deep tight end group but physically they're big as well like these dudes are huge compared to the recent years of tight ends that we've had there was multiple like I was six or seven guys that measured at like six six or taller there was only three of them that were below six four and even at that height they still ran a good 40 times this is from cbssports.com maryland's tight end i cannot pronounce his name um pronounce his last name though okonko uh he ran uh 452 which led the group he's at 6'4, 238 pounds and then virginia's tight end standing at 6'7, jelani woods got in a 4-6-1 time at the four double tight ends that they talked about um i remembered before they went out or uh, were you know jake ferguson isaiah likely bride they did kind of leave out jeremy rucker which i was surprised by when they were talking about them but we'll see like i said there's there's more things to go and now getting back to the giants right how does all of this affect the giants draft strategy draft plan anything like that well other than the quarterbacks i'm not sure if it does much right because if malik willis does for example end up going at sixth overall that means i think somebody is going to fall to us at seven specifically a defensive player because the way they're talking about these offensive linemen, specifically these offensive tackles, I have it, the, the combine on TV right now. It's like one o'clock. It's playing and we know that they're going to go on the field. Offensive linemen, offensive tackles tonight at uh, or to this afternoon at 4 p.m. Eastern time. The way they're talking about these guys, they're going to be going within the top five. It seems like they're saying Ikey McWanu can even be a, a the first overall pick, which I, I kind of entertained that the idea a couple times. I never really thought it would be possible, but I mean, I mean, I love the kid. You guys know he's probably my favorite player in the draft, but I really want the Giants to get him, right? So the only thing that's really affecting the Giants draft plan right now is those quarterbacks. I know the wide receivers had great 40 times and whatnot. I don't see any of them really making a big jump, a big leap up draft boards, up teams draft boards. Um, Maybe there's the wide receiver rankings are changing, but I don't think anybody like say within the top 10 is going to take a wide receiver at least as of right now 
it's those quarterbacks. Malik Willis goes six. If a team like really, really wants to take a chance and let's say that the Texans take um, Malik or Kenny Pickett, that would be kind of crazy. But that certainly would shake up things. Or if the Texans, you know, they trade back and take him, that would make a little bit more sense. But what I'm really looking at for something to shake up are the Giants draft boards or where Evan Neal and Akeem Kwani goes because they're really hyping up these guys. And when I say they, I'm talking about the reporters at the combine. I'm talking about uh, scouts and things like that. They're saying they're really heavily talking about these guys as the number one picks. And they're almost mentioning as an afterthought Aiden Hutchinson and Kayvon Thibodeau. Speaking of Kayvon, once again, from the, the things I'm looking at and seeing the combine here where they're talking, it's it's almost seems like a given that he's going to drop to five or seven. And that's that's kind of a crazy idea to me. I'm still not sure if I feel, fully believe it. And you know what? The edges go tomorrow, I believe. So let that man go out there and he's probably the most athletic edge. Just let him show out. And I feel like he's going to climb back up in his rankings. We shall see. That's it for now, guys. Put your thoughts down below. Let me know what you think. What was your favorite player that you saw yesterday? Uh, you know, who or what do you think can jump up draft boards? Is there anything that's changing the Giants draft plan and strategy? That's it for now. Hey guys, thanks for watching. Thank you for checking out my channel, The Hub, here on Giants YouTube. Make sure you hit that subscribe button and the notification bell so you hear every time I put out a video. Like it, share, and subscribe. And I'm out.